Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Denver, Colorado, in the downtown area of Denver, Colorado. And I figured we'd spend the next couple days here in Denver. I figured we would educate ourselves on Denver, on the state of Colorado, and stop here at the Colorado History Museum, known as History Colorado. So we figure we head inside and get educated on the colorful state of Colorado. So please follow me. As we enter here, I see these poles painted like white aspen trees that you would see around Colorado. We have uh, a map of Colorado there on the floor and some uh, teepees that would be inhabited by Native Americans. And you see this Welcome to Colorful Colorado sign. It says this was uh, donated to the museum by the state in 2011 because the letters are actually supposed to be white but someone painted in the uh, the word colorful so they had to uh had to replace it but you know what i think it looked i think it looks pretty good this way here we have the emory archaeological laboratory in here and this is really interesting there's some items on display but uh apparently okay so this is back in 1979 margie an elephant was being sent to denver to the zoo and uh, died died in uh, in transit died in the van on the way to Denver so that so that the whole thing didn't go to waste they actually um, did some science on Margie's body you can see a bit of the elephant skin right there as well as some arrowheads and then they used the elephant the, the elephant's remains to study um, the penetration of arrowheads into elephant flesh as well as the process that would go into butchering an elephant and i guess that would help them understand how uh, prehistoric people would hunt and butcher mammoths this exhibit's called zoom in there's a hundred objects in here i guess all representing the centennial state of colorado See, each one of these items is numbered. We start out with a spear point, a Native American uh, spear point, onto some Native American uh, basket there, and a cooking jar. Yeah, we have quite a few Native American items. of that shield cover with the uh, turtle on it. So the turtle is very significant to the Cheyenne people and their religion. Down here we have number 12 is a shag beaver felt top hat. A buffalo coat. There's a chunk of gold. Number 24 is this American flag carried by uh, Union soldiers. In the Civil War. So just to press this button here. Okay. You'll see it lit up. An 1860s era fire helmet from the Denver Fire Department. The ceremonial silver railroad spike from 1870 that was given out in celebration of Colorado being connected to the rest of the country via railroad. Have this massive uh, branding iron here and then this is pretty interesting this is a Rio Grande Southern and Silverton Railroad pass now you see it's not just a paper pass it's like made of metal so if you have one of these you can just travel the railroads as many times as you want kind of like the uh, kind of like the original annual pass a ballot box here and apparently Colorado I, I don't think I was aware of this but Colorado 
was the first uh, state that allowed women to vote. And uh, this ballot box here was used in the first election in the country where women were allowed to vote in, uh, in Colorado. Wonderful quilt over here, of course, here at the Carpetbagger Channel. We uh, love and appreciate the artistry that goes into quilt making. It's a mining pick here. And uh, this is an interesting story. Again, I did not know this. See these Christmas lights here. Apparently, here in uh, in Denver was where hanging Christmas lights outside of your house first became popular. Apparently, uh, someone had a sick child, and to help uh, help cheer them up at Christmas, they took some outside lighting, dipped the light bulbs in paint, and created a beautiful. A uh, beautiful scene outside that the child could look outside and see and apparently this practice caught on and other people wanted to uh, Decorate with Christmas lights. Wow Definitely learned something new today See a World War one helmet and gas mask here and then this is a beet topper apparently like a type of machete used for harvesting beets here is a devotional figure of Jesus called the Man of Sorrows. Said this was at a, uh, a Hispanic church for uh, for decades. These are pieces of art made by uh, prisoners at a Japanese uh, internment camp. Of course, Japanese internment was a real big. Uh, black eye on the United States government, uh, putting innocent families into prison during the war. But uh, yeah, some of the, the prisoners made these uh, beautiful pieces of art. This is a outfit for the 10th Mountain Division uniform. This was a World War II era division of skiing soldiers who were specifically trained to be able to fight in snowy mountains, so they use skis. There you can see he's got the rifle slung across his back. And here we have a 1940s era ski lift that was installed in uh, Aspen, Colorado, very early model of the chairlift. I've rode quite a few chairlifts in my day, and that one looks that one looks pretty scary. It's just like a one-person chairlift. Here's a license plate. License plate number two, the second license plate ever issued in the state of Colorado. Wonder, uh, wonder why they couldn't get a hold of <laughs> license plate number one. Here is a rodeo trophy belt. You can see Native American chief there, buffalo with glowing eyes there. I guess this was the uh, 1900s rodeo version of the professional wrestling belt. And then of course one of those amazing chairs made of horns. It's a Colorado flag from the 1940s. There's a dining set from uh, Frontier Airlines back when they used to have the fancy dining on airplanes. Wow, I've, I've never heard of this before. This is this is insane. This is this is United Airlines Flight 629. That's a piece of the uh, aircraft. It it exploded in uh, in midair because uh, someone had actually taken out a life insurance policy on their mother and then planted a bomb in her suitcase and uh, hoped that he would be able to collect it uh, after the, the the whole plane exploded. That's like. Wow, what a horrible, what a horrible thing to do. A horribly insane thing to do. These are some gloves from uh, the Rocky Flat nuclear plant. Use these gloves to handle nuclear materials. This is a Geiger counter, which apparently would be used to mine for uranium here in Colorado. Here is a guitar owned by John Denver says that uh, he sang the songs Sweet Rocky Mountain Paradise and uh, Rocky Mountain High. It says that this actually led to a huge spike in uh, population for Colorado after those songs became popular. I guess John Denver uh, really helped uh, boost 
tourism here in uh, in Colorado. Interesting. He also, I think, also benefited the state of uh, West Virginia as well. Here is a sympathy card sent uh, from a child at Roosevelt Edison Carter School. They sent to the students of Columbine High School after the horrible uh, school shooting occurred there in 1999. Yeah, see, it has like the crying faces on it. It says, I wish it never happened. Here's a badge and a lanyard from the Democratic National Convention in 2008 where Barack Obama accepted the nomination for president. And look at this here, item number 97. We have a pair of Crocs, and I just learned another thing. I learned that Crocs were uh, invented in Colorado, which really makes sense. So yeah, the celebrating the, uh, the creation of uh, Crocs says it helped cushion the Rocky Mountain lifestyle uh, with durable foam and a sense of whimsy. And here we have a water pipe made at the uh, Denver County Fair. I guess we're talking about the uh, legalization of the marijuana plant in Colorado. So we just went through and saw 100 objects celebrating Colorado. Now we discovered Denver using the alphabet. So we use letters instead of numbers to explore Denver. And A is for Adrenaline. It celebrates the amusement parks of Denver. This is the Lakeside Amusement Park's Wild Chipmunk ride. And apparently we can actually go on a ride on a wild, uh, wild chipmunk using this device here. I guess I turn the crank here and uh, the movie will unfold. There we go. A little POV ride <laughs> on the roller coaster. Now I don't have to go ride it. <laughs> B is for blue bear. You see the, the big blue bear looking in the window here. This is actually a famous piece of public art that uh, is in downtown Denver. Yeah, I, I need to check and see how far we are from the uh, big blue bear. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can walk over there and see the real big blue bear uh, after we're done here at the museum. Yeah, you can see the big blue bear there, looking in a window. Now the real blue bear, I believe, is much uh, much larger than this. D is for devoted devoted sports fans. This is uh, this is Tim. The Barrel Man. Apparently, he uh, he had uh, his friends bet him he wouldn't wear a barrel to uh, <laughs> to the uh, football game, and he did. And apparently, became uh, became famous for wearing the barrel. So he continued wearing the barrel to every uh, football game he went to for the next thirty years. Look at him there. He definitely is devoted. And I guess uh, there's a photo op here as well, where we can put on our own. Uh, our own barrel. And E is for electric. 
Here is the Fritical. The Fritical is an electric car made in 1905. That's actually pretty crazy that uh, the Fritical, that we've had electric cars since 1905, but now uh, in uh, the 20, <laughs> 20s they're finally uh finally taking off but we notice here on the fritical there's actually a boot on the tire and that's because f is also for fudge because it's apparently the boot the boot was invented in denver where they would you know put put a thing on your car so you couldn't drive it away way to go denver that that one's not so great now jay is for joy and they talk about casa bonita one of the greatest restaurants in the country now uh, as a recording of this casa bonita is closed um it was supposed to open in may it, it currently is may but it is getting later and later in may and they have still not announced a day that they are opening so they're not yet announced a day for opening so i'm afraid that they probably will not open by the time i leave denver which just means i'm gonna have to come back to denver again and <laughs> fill it casa Badita. and you can actually apparently here play the south park episode that uh, featured casa bonita m is for microbrew see all these different uh beers brewed here within uh denver of course, Coors is kind of the mainstream Denver beers, but also have all these different local beers as well. P is for prepared. You can see the nature walkers and, and skiers here have to come prepared with their emergency medical kits, Swiss Army knives. He's got a candy bar there in his backpack. Now K is for knockout. What is this? Buffalo Bill versus a brown cloud? So, welcome to Denver Knockout. Touch a poster below to start a battle. This, what even is this? Molly Brown versus Tom Shane. Not sure who Tom Shane is. Brown Place versus <laughs> Brown Palace versus the Denver Omelette. Yeah, let's see. Buffalo Bill versus Rocky Mountain Pollution King. Brown Cloud. So, Buffalo Bill versus Pollution. Okay, so Buffalo Bill. <laughs> what is this? This is amazing. Oh, there's pollution. The brown cloud of Denver? What's happening? Oh no, he's he's poisoning poisoning Buffalo Bill with pollution. Oh, he's gonna shoot the pollution. Does that work? Apparently it did. Buffalo Bill murdered pollution with his gun, proving there's no problems that uh, Buffalo Bill's gun can't solve. Let's see what other fights they have here. Mary Ellich versus Colfax Avenue. We have uh, John Elway versus Colfax <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> John Elway versus John Denver. Oh, the ultimate showdown. The big blue horse versus everyone. Blucifer, the, the evil horse from the Denver airport, is going to take on everyone else in Denver. Denver this is, this is so fun. The Mustang has quite frankly scares the Bejeevers out of all of us. The blue horse. And in this corner. The 15 celebrity defenders of the Denver Knockout. There's a dog food factory. There's the pollution there. There's Buffalo Bill. Oh, there's the Denver Omelette. Squaring off against Lucifer. Oh no. Oh, they're using his lasers to uh, chase them away. Big Blue Horse wins. Defeated everything else at Denver. T is for Triceratops, celebrating the fossils found here in Denver. Apparently a Triceratops is the mascot to uh, the Colorado Rockies. And uh, yeah, we don't have any Triceratops bones in the case, but there's a Bakari skull and a camel bone. So Z is for zombies? There is a, a, a zombie. I didn't know about Denver 
zombies. Here there is a zombie in this case. Even a little zombie squirrel down there. So Z is for zombies, I guess. And the reason is because I guess Chessman, Chessman Park, a, 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 a park here in, uh, in Denver was originally a giant cemetery. It says that they moved some of the graves but left a lot of them in place just because it was easier. And that's literally the plot behind behind Poltergeist. So yeah, I guess uh, it says that uh, if a zombie apocalypse happened, the zombies would rise out of the ground of uh, Chessman Park. Here's the Denver diorama, a little miniature version of Denver since this dates back to uh, 1860. Looks very different nowadays. Rear talks about the history of skiing. You can see the, the sky car there that take you to the top of a ski slope. So this apparently is a tradition in uh, Colorado known as the Lighted Man. Um, this is, suit belongs to a John Banks, who is the, guess, the current lighted man, and he will ski down a hill covered in lights, also wearing a fireproof suit and shooting fireworks out of his back as he skis down the hill. Wow. All right, they have a skiing simulator in here. So we've got to stand on these skis here. All right, so stand on skis to begin. I guess I'll put our right there. Oh! Oh no! My feet! Oh, 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 oh! Whoa! Oh, my skis are moving! Oh! Apparently I failed. Okay. Oh no, that's not good. Ouch! Better luck next time. You okay? That was awesome! Here are the villains of Colorado history, as well as the, uh, pretty much the villains of American history, the KKK. Boo! And there's a sign back here for the Cozy Clean Cafe, which the owner apparently uh, changed the name to that to signify that he supported the Klan. What a jerk. Talk some more here about the uh, Japanese internment camps in uh, Colorado. We have suitcases here of what the family families would pack and bring to the internment camps. Just imagine, tell your kids to pack their suitcases because we're gonna go live in a prison. That's horrible. I guess this is inside of one of the uh, internment camp tents. So you kind of set up like barracks here, but uh, yeah, absolute shame to, uh, to treat innocent people like this. It's an exhibit on Colfax Avenue, which it says is the longest and wickedest street in America. You see the ashtrays from the different hotels. There it's from the, uh, the Bugs Bunny Hotel which is still there, but they actually got sued and uh, changed the name to the Big Bunny Motel. Up here we have some old uh, neon signs from Colfax Avenue. It's the Across the Street Cafe. And that wonderful uh, colored TV sign it used to be a big enticement to staying at a hotel. Just a little exhibit on the Pig and Whistle restaurant in Denver. A little pig statue there. I have the pig shaped salt and pepper shakers. And look at that delicious meal there. Looks like having some uh, some ribs there for dinner. Here we head into the Sunnyside Mine. Some mining tools in here. A, a pan for panning for gold, a shovel, a scale to weigh, weigh all the gold you find. Here is a, I guess, a mining shaft elevator. So I guess we gotta close the door 
doors here on the uh, on the mine shaft here. Oh, here we go. Headed down into the mine. Been in here a little while now. It's shaking, vibrating. It's not stopped yet. I, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't stop on its own. I'm not sure. See the mule there pulling ore into the mine. And uh, here is a, a traditional drinking song here. It says, my sweetheart's a mule in the mine. I drive her all day without lines. On the car front I sit and tobacco I spit all over my sweetheart's behind. It's quite a, quite a love song there. It says, ore is heavy. Lift the shovel to find out what mucking feels like. Well, I've always wanted to know what mucking felt like. Mucking. Mucking ain't easy. Shows here how ancient Pueblo people actually farmed turkeys. See the turkeys there eating some corn, leaving some turkey turds behind. Talks about the Pueblo belief system and how they believed that snakes uh, helped create a spiritual balance. Oh, actually, there's one right now. Talks here about how farmers traveled to uh, Colorado's in the 1910s and 20s. Says it was envisioned as a promised land. Unfortunately, it would turn out to be a big, dusty bowl. So apparently people traveled to uh, Colorado to farm uh, dirt because they saw how good it looked during the green season, but did not know about the drought season. Because here's a divining rod that actually used to find water. I've seen this done before where, where someone will hold the two prongs and this will lead them to water. And I guess it's scientifically not not been proven to be 100% uh, uh, accurate. Here's a, uh, a wheel. You try to figure out what you'll do next. It says Dust Bowl farmers were faced with a tough decision. It says you're in debt because you bought an expensive tractor. You need to sell more wheat in order to pay off the bank. What will you do? Spin the wheel. All right, let's see what to do, what to do. We will give up? No, we will, we will plow. It says your income was slashed when wheat prices fell, but you need to sell a crop in order to put food on the table. What will you do? Let's spin the wheel. We'll spin a little lighter this time. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? We can pray. Nope, not gonna pray. We're gonna plow. Your last crop withered in the drought. Now you'll need to make up for lost earnings. What will you do? What will we do? Maybe some more plowing will be the will be the solution. We could borrow. We could give up. We could. Oh, no plowing. Time for praying display on the grasshopper plagues of the 1930s. The farmers had to deal with hordes of grasshoppers that would eat all their crops and even devour uh, clothes left hanging up on the clothesline. You can see the grasshoppers there just eating holes in these clothes, eating their socks. Wow, it's pretty horrifying. Apparently in addition to grasshoppers, they had to deal with ravenous jackrabbits. See a couple of big old jackrabbits here. It says, push the button and watch the jackrabbit population boom. Oh, wow. Get those, more <laughs> this endless sea of, of uh, jackrabbits up here. Well, that's cool, let's do that. Let's do that again. I'm gonna hit the button and watch the jackrabbit population explode. There they go. Look at all those jackrabbits. Now this is pretty, Amazing here. It's called Revolt Runners and Gliders. It's by uh, all this is created by an artist named Virgil Ortiz 
who is envisioning a, a futuristic world uh, involving the Pueblo people. Here are some authentic uh, Pueblo pieces of pottery and artwork. And you can see the futuristic pottery here inspired by that, created by the artist. Yes, it's a pretty amazing and unique aesthetic here. It says enter the portal here. Oh wow, look at this. It's pretty, oh wow. This is pretty remarkable. These are the Recon Watchmen. It says they are part of the 2180 Pueblo Revolt. There's more of these futuristic Pueblo characters. All right, now we enter the 1920s town of Kyoto, Colorado. See the school in there. Have the general store over on this side. So we can hop aboard this old timey automobile. Oh, this we got a outhouse over here. Oh yeah, I was expecting to see Pappy in here. Heading into the barn here. Oh yeah, I can see a see an old milk cow. It says Moo. This cow needs milking. See if you can fill the bucket with light. So we got the the udders here. Wow, that scared me. There we go. Instead of, instead of milk, you fill it with, with light. It says, what's that smell? I guess we gotta smell these cans and guess what they are. All right, let's see what this one here smells like. It reminds me of like the fog in a haunted house. Like the haunted house, like ambient fog, but it's, it's alpha, alpha. That's interesting. Let's see what this next one here is. It's a little stinky. Again, it smells like, it still smells like a haunted house to me. Oh, it was manure. I was uh, unknowingly sniffing manure. Manure. Now this is, uh, this is pretty interesting here. This is a statue of a Union soldier that used to be in front of the uh, Colorado State Capitol. It says this was, it had been toppled during uh, Black Lives protest in uh, 2020. Apparently a lot of the concern uh, for this statue was that it actually on the plaque honored uh, uh, battles that are now considered to be atrocities against Native Americans. But uh, a lot of people at the same time saw this as a monument to how the Union fought in the Civil War and how, uh, how they helped end slavery. So they've included some statements here from different people with different opinions on the statue. And they just decided to uh, put this statue in a museum just to uh, kind of talk about, I guess, uh, you know, the controversy that we've been having with monuments in uh, the past uh, several years, you can see it still has some of the spray paint on his face there. Other bits of spray paint on his body from the protests. Then they invite visitors to uh, put up their opinion here on these post-it notes on what they feel about uh, monuments like that. It says, do we need monuments? What do you think their purpose sh should be? 
here we have an exhibit on the LGBTQ plus population of uh, Colorado. Apparently uh, Colorado had some very early gay marriages. See there is six marriage license here awarded to six gay couples in uh, 1975. There's an at-home HIV test kit and uh, there are some bottles for uh, hormone replacement therapy used by people who are uh, transitioning. And as we exit through the gift shop here, I noticed this. This is uh, little keychains of Blucifer. It actually says Blucifer Demon Stallion there. The uh, horse outside of the Denver airport I showed in my video earlier. So you push on his forehead here and he has the red glowing eyes that he has. At night. Earlier we saw Blucifer take on the entire uh, city of Denver. I think I may have to take this home. Also, here's a stuffed big blue bear. I think we need to just maybe try to walk over and see if we can spot this giant bear that is so popular here in uh, Denver. Okay, I think we're going to go on a walk and try to find the big blue bear. Over here in front of the Denver Art Museum, we have a giant dustpan and broom is sweeping up trash there. Look at me! I'm a piece of trash! Here's a what's appropriate behavior around a giant broom and dustpan. It's of course okay to take your picture with the broom, walking around the broom. What's not okay is touching the broom, climbing on the broom, skating on the broom, riding on the broom, fondling the broom, caressing the broom. It started getting weird there towards the end. Another piece of public artwork here. You see it looks like a face split in half. And then this thing in the middle has handprints all over it. Now is it just me or is Honey Bucket like a super gross name for a porta potty? I don't know. Is the name the name just creep ugh. Ugh, I don't know. I don't even like to think about it. I don't like to associate honey with uh with an outhouse, like the, to me, the bucket is like the part that you urinate and defecate in. And, and, and what's the honey? What's the honey? I ask. I have no idea what type of business this is, but I love the name. Here we have arrived at the Colorado Convention Center. And look what we have over there. We spotted our big blue bear. Now there he is peeking in the window of the convention center. Yeah, big old curious bear there. Just wants to see what's going on. See what sort of conventions they're having in there. Maybe they're having a maybe they're having a honey convention, who knows. But let's head inside and see what the bear looks like from the inside. Here we are inside the uh, Colorado Convention Center. And you can see that giant hulking bear <laughs> looking in the window. Yeah, as adorable as that is, if it was a real bear that big, it'd be very terrifying. I'm trying to break in and all. Walking under the big blue bear. Do, 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 do. Just walking under a bear. A big guy. <laughs> Someone leave some cornflakes there for you, buddy. Having a mighty little meal of cornflakes. Actually, I think those might be. I think those might be Fritos. 
check this out. The Blue Bear of Colorado here on a dumpster. It's got some pretty cool uh, sunglasses and a, and a cap there here at uh, Blue Bear Wastes. This is an interesting fountain here. There's two sea lions and each one has a naked child on their back and then they're vomiting huge streams of water towards each other meeting in the middle. Huh. Some fun stuff here in Denver. Come down here to the Colorado State Capitol. Down here you can see the pedestal that that uh, statue in the museum, the statue of the Civil War soldier, used to be on top of this pedestal right here. So you see they've actually covered up the pedestal with some wood here. It says the Centennial State of Colorado. One reason I wanted to come down here to the Colorado State Capitol is that one of these steps in front of the Capitol actually marks the exact place where you are one mile above sea level. Denver known as the Mile High City. And here, right here, it says one mile above sea level, here's the point where we are one mile above the ocean. And from Denver, Colorado, standing exactly one mile above sea level, I thank you for joining me here today as we took some adventures around downtown Denver, Colorado. Appreciate you guys coming along with me. If uh, you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized greetings and messages on Cameo. You want to send birthday messages, anniversary messages, or just for fun messages, all that information is in the description of the video. And all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this city one mile above the sea. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.